There comes that terrible moment every year when daylight savings time ends. Some rat fink takes away that extra hour, and your fading memories of summer finally disappear. Some people get sad, but not my brother Pete. He knows that on that famous hour-sucking day, you get to time travel. In the spring, you spring forward, but in the fall, you fall back. That means that at midnight, you get to go back in time and live the same hour twice. To celebrate this wobble in the time warp, Pete and I always spend that legendary hour doing something, well, legendary. It's a time-honored tradition, but this year, I just forgot. I guess I had more important things on my mind than traveling into the past. I was thinking about the future. This is the day. Sure is. It's one of those days when you feel you could write with your foot. There's less gravity. Yep. Pete, I'm going to do it. After all these years of wondering, I'm going to pick up the phone, dial Owen's number, and say, let's go out on a date tonight. Instead of turning the clock back one measly hour, I think Pete wishes he could turn it back 10,000 hours. Back to a time when we did everything together. Now there's days when he doesn't even like to breathe the same air as me. I have to admit, sometimes I wish I could turn the clock back a couple thousand hours too. Back to a time when Ellen and I knew exactly what we were. Back before things started to get confusing. Ellen had always been a girl and a friend, but finally I had to know. Was she a girlfriend? I tried calling her from different places on different phones, but nothing felt right. It took a while, but once I found the right spot, destiny was one ring away. Hello, Hickle Residence. Ellen speaking. Her dad makes her answer the phone that way. It kills me. Hello? Pickle residence. Hey, Pete, what's up? Uh, notice anything different about the gravity today? No, not really. Uh, try writing something with your foot. OK. Ellen? Do you want to go out on a date with me tonight? I'm here. It's just, wow, Pete, we've been friends for so long. A real date? You and me. Why do I hear birds all of a sudden? Look outside. So what do you say? I mean, yes! My destiny was in motion, but Pete's was still sucking wind. His time travel dream had always been for us to do something so legendary that they'd immortalize the moment with a souvenir slidey pen, like the one he got at the Alamo. But without me there beside him, he wasn't exactly sure what to do. Hey, Pete, what you got in there? Some chicken pot pies or something? Nah, time travel stuff. 
supplies. The kit included Krebstick 2000 deodorant, crucial for sealing your pores. A mood ring for scientific tests in the time warp continuum. Yellow means worried. And most importantly, riboflavin. Without a mega dose of riboflavin, you could end up stuck in the time vortex. Stranded for eternity. Well, Bill bet me. He bet me I wouldn't do it. But I did it. Now pay me the dollar. I didn't say dollar. I said doll hair. Then give me one doll hair. Come on, I want it. What's with you? I called up Ellen and asked her out. We're going on a date tonight. <laughs> Nothing. It's just, it was supposed to happen with you guys? Wouldn't it have happened by now? Not necessarily. We were just waiting for the right moment. And you just decided that today was that day? It is the day. You want proof? Huh? How about a little test? If the next car that drives by is, uh, I don't know, yellow, then Ellen and I are meant to be. Too easy. Make it a yellow school bus. Okay, a yellow school bus. Get in. Sorry, fellas. Gotta go. Big uh, date tonight. Keep in touch. And just like that, Fate gave me the big green light. Hey, Stu, how's it going? Sally left me again. Over nothing! Or was it a big red light? What if Fate was telling me I'd end up like Driver Stu? A shattered casualty of love. What's the matter? I'm fine. I got a whole new outlook on things. Look. Plus, I'm driving my bus to the Arctic Circle, where I'm gonna tattoo Sally's name to my forehead, strap myself to an iceberg, and drift slowly off to sea. Good plan, Stu. You mind if I get off before then? You sure? I brought sandwiches. Meanwhile, as 2,000% of the recommended daily allowance for riboflavin surged through his body, Pete wondered if he'd even need it. Then fate smiled. It was an evil, twisted smile by endless Mike Hellstrom, the most hated bully in town. But it was still a smile. Hi there. Hi there. You're new around here, aren't you? Yes, I am. My name's Donna Mecklenburg. What's your name? It's my name. That's my name. I gotta hand it to you, Wrigley. You sure know how to party. It's for time traveling, you cheese plug. Ooh, time traveling. <laughs> Guess your big brother didn't get all the dink jeans after all, huh? Let me ask you one question, Mike. Were you ever a kid? Was I ever a kid? No. We'll see about that. The mood ring said it all. It was a red alert that warned the world that my brother had a plan. A plan that would obliterate Endless Mike and turn Pete into a slidey pen god. I wasn't nearly so confident. After my chat with Stu, I was ready to call the whole thing off. Then once again, fate smiled. It was a sickening, sadistic smile, but it was still a smile. It would be the ultimate test. I just asked good old Mike if I could borrow his wheels for the date. If he said yes, then Ellen and I would be together until the end of time. If he said no, then I guess our love was never meant to be. Oh, oh, uh, uh, uh. Look, you can see your reflection. It's nice. What are you doing here, Carrothead? Spit it out or I'll spit you out. 
Uh, uh, hey, Mike. I was just wondering if I could borrow your car for the night. <laughs> Big date with Ellen. Oh, you don't say. Well, well, well. It's about time you guys dropped the puck and played a little tonsil hockey, huh? <clears throat> uh, really? You think so? Sure. Sure. See, the only thing is that tonight is my drive-in night. And I never miss my drive-in night. That's OK, really. Um, it probably wouldn't have worked out anyway. No, 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 no. We can't let that happen. You came to me in your time of need, Wrigley. Can't let you down. Ride like the wind, soul brother. My insane scheme is working perfectly, except for one detail. I can't drive. Got a problem? Take you over to the drive-in, get you set up. Drive-in's not about driving anyway, right? <laughs> right. <clears throat> get in. I was seeing a whole new side to Endless Mike. And after his daring raid of the Hellstrom house, Pete got to see a whole new side of me. What's your brother doing with that scuzz monkey? The dark side beckons him. Come on, let's motor. I know, but this could be a felony. Cool. After you get your arm around her, and you're ready for your next step, just to create a cocoon of love by keeping the windows fogged up at all times, okay? No fog, no fun. But how will we see the movie? What? What are you talking about? Uh, I mean, how do you keep them fogged? All right, just, just listen, okay? You close the roof, like so, right? Then, you go over here, and if you turn the fan and the heat, equalize both of them with a light defroster current, you can control the mean humidity. Oh, that, with her hot, steaming breath, it'll take care of the rest, big boy. All right, now, once you get the cocoon going all nice and perfect, right? Then, then, you hit the go button. You hit the go, and then, and then, my friend, then you know. <laughs> Final test. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> All right. You're on your own. <clears throat> Welcome to the future, Pete Wrigley. Don't blow it. How could I blow it? I had a car. I had a date. I had the world. As the clock ticked off the final hours of daylight savings time, one peep prepared to travel into the past, while the other peep prepared for the future. It arrived at precisely 9.27 p.m. daylight savings time, wearing a new vest and a nervous smile. Hi. Hi. I can't believe this. You got Endless Mike to lend you his car. Yeah, he drove me here and everything. Believe it or not, he's not really that bad a guy. Incredible. Isn't it? We're on a date. You and me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Wellsville Drive-In. Please remember that big rule prohibits smoking and littering. And beeping your horn like morons when the film is out of focus. Or when it's dirty. That really stings my plan. Michael be here. He's always here. Look! Like clockwork. While Pete began his countdown, I began mine. 
nothing to worry about. I was worried about you. Thank you for worrying. <clears throat> Finally, at 10.51 daylight savings time, I made my initial contact. I think I'm gonna get us some popcorn. With time running out, I needed fog and I needed it fast. I will stay in control. I will not get angry. I am a self-actualized caring person who loves nature, long walks, and little children. Never better. Let me get that for you. Sugar low. Sure is foggy in here. Sure is. Kinda hard to see the movie. I know. <laughs> Take all this a little slower, Pete. We've been taking it slow our entire lives, Helen. Don't you want to know? All I want to know is can you get me some jujubes? Sure thing, honey pie. Outstanding. With only 10 minutes to go until the movie ended, I had to take the final leap. What are you doing? It's the final test for us, Ellen. You hit the go, and then... Oh, no. What are you talking about? Pete, you're not acting like yourself. You're acting just like... I don't know. You're acting like... Hi, I'm Mike. Just wanted to stop by and see how you young lovers were doing. Timing with the go button? Very tasty. Ten points. Go button? What is he talking about? Go button? I I'm not quite sure I've ever however, heard of it. However, I must say I'm extremely disappointed in this so-called cocoon of love. What did I tell you, huh? No fog, no fog. I can explain, really. No fog, no fun? Is that all I mean to you? After all we've been through, after all these years, this is what you think of me? Ellen! Something I said? I had hoped that by midnight, I would know if Ellen was a friend or more than a friend. Now, thanks to my stupidity, she was neither. Let's light this candle. <laughs> What is going 
on here? History. We interrupt tonight's feature, That Kind of Woman, to bring you a special film presentation. We hope you enjoy it. It's called Endless Mike. The early days. <laughs> <laughs> savings time gave me a shot at a new beginning with Ellen. At least in theory. Leave me alone! Go away! It's late enough as it is. My father is going to kill me. We said we know by midnight. It's past midnight. No, it isn't. It's only 11.30. Daylight savings time ended. We've got a second chance. We can live the hour over again. After what you did to me? I know. I'm sorry. I kind of got lost in, in the future. I know that sounds weird, but now I'm back. And all I want to do is go back to when... Ellen... I just want to be friends again. Maybe that's what we were supposed to be. Walk you home? I realize that there are some things you just can't force. As much as you want to, you can't control time. At best, you can turn the clock back one hour a year. Make that two hours in Pete's case. Because as he peddled his way to glory that night, the Time Lord crossed into the central time zone. And when he did, he got to time travel again for another full hour. Sure enough, they did make that slidey pen for him. They're kind of rare. But if you look hard enough, you can probably find one. Well, good night, buddy. <laughs> good night, pal. Would Ellen and I ever figure out whether we were friends or more than friends? I guess only time would tell. <laughs>